Hello friends of YouTube, welcome to Mike Reads the World. Dear God, why did I start with Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy? They warned me. They warned me it was a violent novel. <laughs> they warned me it was intense. But I started with it anyway, didn't I? <clears throat> I'm counting it for Texas, because Cormac McCarthy... While well, he was born in Rhode Island, uh, raised in, and went to university in Tennessee, uh, spent a good part of his life in El Paso, Texas, on or near the Mexican border, and uh, wrote this book while living there, and then uh, went on to uh, and finish the rest of his life in Santa Fe, um, where he recently passed away this year. Um, I have read one other book by... Cormac McCarthy, um, The Road, and I did really, and I did really enjoy it. Um, read it twice, actually, and very affecting both times. But after reading it twice, I kind of feel like, you know, that's that's about all I'm gonna get out of it. This one, I feel, could be read. And reread, and you would still find and notice more things in it if you can get over how brutal it is. Um, everyone talks about that, but I guess I should address that first. Here we go. So, the violence in the novel starts out as is very personal. Uh, you have some personal interactions between our main character, who's the kid, who's very much a blank slate character. And I was very confused in the beginning of the story why it was phrased that, in a certain way, that the kid, who was the father of the man, I didn't understand that until the very end of the story. But I, yeah, I'm going to try not to um, go into big spoilers here. This is our first book for the United States, Read the States, Mike Reads the States, and I want to cheers to that. And also, and also, this book is just revealing the ugly, ugly history that is behind uh, this nation, and it's not only my nation, but the history of the world. But the psychology of how this nation was founded, like, this stuff is pretty... It's, it, you know, in human history, it's fairly recent. We're talking just after the, the end of the Mexican-American War. Um, I'm getting distracted, so... I'm, this, this, I'm still a little bit shell-shocked from finishing this book last night, and I stayed up later than I should have, uh, t again, um, but I had to know how it ended, and uh, it's the kid being this blank slate type of character is something that, yeah, y you know, it's, it's really strange because the experience of reading this book is that you start out kind of identifying with the kid as the main character, and he's never given another name, he's just the kid. Uh, well, sort of, I, yeah, that's all I'll say for now. But uh, there's parts of the story where he just like fades into the background, especially during some of some of the, the scenes where he's involved. You know, he gets involved with a group of mercenaries. First, um, a group of kind of renegades, uh, from the leftovers of the United States Army of the Mexican-American War. They go into Mexican territory. Um, bad stuff happens to them. There's br brutal scenes. But again, they're all it, it's, it's all very senseless. All the violence just kind of seems part of the world. And it kind of gets you indoctrinated into into this just very rough, very violent world. And even in the first, you know, 70 to 100 pages, I'm still thinking, okay, 
the this this sort of violence like in today's day and age like we're pretty desensitized to it um and people talk about this being like an unfilmable novel i don't think that's true the violence is i mean like a quentin tarantino film but maybe that's a good example of perhaps why the violence in in this book is unfilmable because the violence does not it is devoid of like quirkiness it's devoid of humor the experience of reading this book was also very much uh, like reading The Water Margin, uh, the book of um, from 14th century and then later 17th century uh, China, the version I read, where you have this band of renegades or rebels that um, border on like demons and you're in this pack of demons and it was very much, much of the book was very much like reading The Water Margin where these these uh demons or you know demon heroes demonic heroes that you're following throughout the book it seems like they can never die they can never be defeated and uh well that's not the case throughout the entirety of the blood of blood meridian it certainly feels that way for a lot of book, the book very similar like like you're part of this and you feel a little bit guilty while while reading this kind of book because of the just the brutality of it, and the same with Water Margin. But the difference here with Blood Meridian is it's devoid of any of the humor or the lightheartedness of Water Margin, or if a, a more modern example that I just used, a Quentin Tarantino film. So uh, I, I heard I don't I didn't look into it at all, but I heard they're trying again to make this a film, and yeah, it's difficult because the the violence in the book is simply setting. It's like, oh, it's part of the atmosphere. I mean, you're you're between scenes of just kind of traveling through the various landscapes of Mexico and the southern United States, you know, different kinds of deserts, highlands, um, even snow-capped mountains. Uh, you, you know, you go to the coasts of California. It's, uh, there's just this huge variety of, of, of landscapes and seasons and description a lot of astral descriptions the positions of constellations in the stars meteors um, all of these descriptions really pop out at you um, but then they're they're interspersed with just these scenes of absolute brutality to everybody you know women children um, brutality of all kinds natives uh, uh, African Americans, whites, you know, this whole, this whole band of, uh, mercenaries is like, is, it's a mixed group, right? You even have like the Delaware Indians <clears throat> here and this band of mercenaries, I haven't even said, but if you know anything about this book, you know what they're doing. They're hunting down Native Americans and they're being paid for collecting, uh, scalps. Uh, there's certain Native American groups in the area that are causing a lot of trouble for uh, caravans and travelers to the west. Uh, specifically, to clear the way to the west for the gold mines is one of the objectives. But it's not just it's not just the Texan government. It's the it's the Mexican state governments of Chihuahua, the and uh, and the Sonora Desert area that are paying for scalps. Um, and they don't distinguish between women, children, and anything, and neither does this mercenary band. And again, I was saying the kid, the kid is part of this, and so are you. And you feel, you really feel like you are in the character of the kid, because the kid in many parts of the book, especially during the, the battle and violent scenes and the massacres, fades into the background. Uh, which is, it's such a unique experience, and and um, Cormac McCarthy's writing, of course, is extremely unique. Um, I used to be annoyed with it, uh, with not using quotation marks, but once you adapt to it, um, I actually have learned to, to really like it. Um, I'm a big fan of the dash that they use in Spanish and, and old uh, English novels, um, just the dash for when people are talking. That's my my preferred. Um, I, I I usually I'm often a little bit annoyed when when authors try to 
do the same style as Cormac McCarthy, not using any um, quotation marks. But yeah, once once I got used to it, it's like I, I really it is immersive because your your mind just kind of starts to learn to figure out who's talking and to follow the logic of it. Um, I'm, I'm here just really describing the experience of reading this book. This is not a review. I'm not seeking to give you the meanings. I've looked into, I spent uh, part of the day while working, lis listening to a few things as I'm going about my daily tasks. And uh, I just, uh, you know, really found that I was just amazed at how many, what variety of interpretations people can have of this book. Um, I really enjoyed, for example, some Gnostic in interpretations, um, phil some Gnostic influence perhaps that was on this book, whether unconsciously or consciously. Uh, and, and uh, the, I mean, obviously in the book there's a lot of references and mentions of tarot cards, not only the actual tarot cards make an appearance in the book, but like even just the characters, you know, the judge, the fool, um, you, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of possible tarot references throughout the book and a lot of symbolism and interpretation you can do with that. Uh, however, yeah, I can't, I can't compare this experience to anything I've read. It, uh... It is it is really a glimpse into into the darkest aspects of of life um, or the most how do I say the most like I don't know the the time we live in seems so removed from this and when I read a look a book like this just like Water Margin I'm 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 left asking myself like could this it, were things actually this brutal, this terrible in a part of the world? Could people really not work out? Could they not just be happy farming and or even like pastor, pastoring their animals and and just trade and 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 talk things out? No, <laughs> but yeah, I mean history shows us that there were that that this is our nature uh, in when when we fail to. Uh, create societal structures and, and create a functioning society that these types of situations do happening. And in fact, that's not even what's, what's scary about it, is that it's the societal structures... Oh, my light, solar light turned on. The societal structures themselves are supporting this horrible, violent, colonizing behavior and, and this sort of... Um, just like when I read Water Margin, I'm thinking, we're still the same people. Like, we're not far from this. If if we find ourselves in a situation where society collapses, and I'm living here in this country with, with, you know, so many people with firearms, and now this is not, you know, I'm not trying to bring this into a uh, any sort of political discussion. It's just a fact of, like, it, you know, things could go crazy, and it's kind of scary, and the book the book takes your mind to those places. Um, but, and it also confronts you on a personal level with, uh, with your own, uh, you know, whatever darkness is in your own heart. Because the kid, there's a great conflict at the heart of the novel that the kid, and without spoiling too much, but, but the kid does not feel 100% invested in in the murdering that this mercenary band is doing he's been a victim of circumstances really his whole life that has led to this being his only livelihood all he knows but um you know he and of course the infamous character of the judge who some describe as you know a truly terrifying literary character um he is kind of uh he is he is both all right, I'm not going to try to say what he is, but clearly in the book you realize that he is something more than human. At least that is the feeling that the book gives you. But then there's other times in the book where you don't need to see him as more than that. 
the behavior of Glanton and the judge, the horrible things that they do in the book, the, the things I'm, I don't even want to say out loud in this video, um, that are worse even than the simple violence that is perpetrated in war. That is terrifying enough in itself. They don't need to be anything supernatural. These don't need to be demons, but demons is certainly a way to describe a person who has lost their, their, you know, humanity, really. What is humanity? Humanity is the striving to overcome kind of the basic animal instincts <laughs> and, and, and transcend and create, uh, uh, a place where where people and and things can grow and thrive and uh and yeah at least for me a cynical um a cynical hopeless worldview although the book certainly tempts you with that i think the major when you read this book not only not only are you witnessing the temptation but because you are in the kid you are being tempted with the cynicism and hopelessness of a real historical scenario. And the surreal elements of this book serve to enhance that, uh, that, feeling, of, that feeling of being tempted with, with, a, with a, a view of life that is that many people adopt and and would be tempted basically to lose your soul the idea and i'm not talking because i don't i mean maybe there's a lot of metaphysical arguments that the soul may not exist but the idea of the soul is important to exist whether it exists or not and at this time in my life i i believe that and it's the same kind of thing as in the road like carrying the fire there's an obvious connection between the the where Blood Meridian leaves the reader and where Cormac McCarthy later goes in the road, uh, there's an obvious connection between the books to me. Um, again, probably not a lot of this is original, but I, again, am just trying to give the ex what I experienced reading this book and, um, and the ending. Oh, man, the ending just made it clear to me that I, the, the ending made me realize that I had somehow, somehow in the course of this book been fused with the kid. I had, just like the kid, become desensitized to the violence, you know, and, and, and in, even at the beginning of this book, I was already sort of on the path to being desensitized to violence just by living in this, you know, in the culture we live in, but not desensitized to real violence, desensitized to screen and and book and media violence, video game violence. Um, but but this, by the end of this book, it's like I can't even tell the difference between the simulation, the book, and myself. It was really an, a kind of out-of-body experience reading this book and traveling along with this mercenary gang truly an incredible experience reading this book Supler superlative after super super superlative uh is is an astounding astounding book and actually quite quite inspirational to myself as well to of how I would like to approach writing and not and and it makes me question too like could I ever write something like like how does somebody write something like this? My God, what I mean, you listen to Cormac McCarthy talk interviews and things like that, and he's clearly an intelligent, a good man. Um, yeah, it's it's part of you know in in how there's got to be something in in what James Joyce wrote about needing to be liberated of the fear of hell in order to confront hell. Uh, the hell that is within us as a human race, you know? It, it's, uh, 
I need I need I need to stop a minute. It's like you know when that idea like the idea is just right there, but uh you know what? I need to I need to reread this book. I need to reread this book. There's no way around that. There's there's a lot of books that I say, okay, I got something out of this. I don't need to reread it. I could reread it and get more out of it. This book, like, I feel like rereading this book, I would just get so much more out of it because in some things I listened to afterwards, I was like, oh my god, I did not even realize that. And there were a few things I heard that made the judge even more terrifying because most of the book it's like why do they why do they talk about the judges so terrifying me i mean it's 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 the violence that's happening around them that's so terrifying and there's so much there's so much bad and dirtiness and violence that's happening in this whole book that you miss a few of the you miss a few like and it seems senseless but then you miss you miss the conscious acts of the conscious demonic things that some of these characters do that they could have not done that they could have made different choices regardless of the world they lived in and what could the kid have done this book the next time i enter this book i will be i will be entering in battle with it i will be conf i will be joining it as as a as a soldier <laughs> for my own soul because with a pen uh to combat to combat the philosophies of the judge to help the kid to try to as a as my own as being my own character the reader of the book to follow the kid and try to be either his guardian angel or to try to imagine what i could have said or done as the kid or i don't know i i i don't know i i just uh the next time i read this book it's going to be it's going to be i'll be i'll be ready for the experience that it's going to be and i'll, I'll i will embrace the challenge of uh of reading it that it is because i do i do think that this is has become and is you know and i'm not I'm not the I'm not the most important voice who has said this, you know, look at Harold Bloom and and others uh many many other people recognize this as one of the greatest American novels of all time and it's it's interesting because there's also I feel a lot of young people gravitating toward the road and a lot of people actually like the road better than Blood Meridian because it offers it offers you up the carrying the fire it tells you how kind of a simple way you can overcome this cynicism this darkness but in a way i feel that that's its weakness i feel that the weakness of the road is that it gives you the solution instead of making you fight for it blood meridian does not leave you with the solution it leaves you a scenario where you must return and go into battle that is all I have to say today about Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian. I hope you have enjoyed uh, our first Reading the States um, episode for Texas and Cormac McCarthy. And we'll see you next time. I will probably be focusing on uh, Reading the World. I will definitely be focusing on Reading the World, but I am also excited to continue reading these books from my own country. Please feel free to leave your comments. I am more and more feeling confident in leaning into this is a vlog of my journey in this and and uh and it's a place to just let go my feelings of what the experience of reading the book is like. I'm not trying to be a book critic here. I'm not trying to be a philosopher you know beyond figuring my own life out my own self out it's just to express the feelings that i felt while reading the book the thoughts i had and that's all that's all uh feel free to contribute comments 
I appreciate all who uh, like and subscribe and, and are interested in this project. And, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.